let's talk about your OG YouTube days yes. because there were some videos put out that like people considered controversial and people like tried to bring your old YouTube videos back to this mm -hmm. day. Like you got involved in like, I feel like a good bit of drama back then. Like when you look back at the OG YouTube days, mm -hmm. how do you feel about them? And how would you even describe them? <sighs> it's like so many eras of YouTube too. Like mm. the OG ones were just like so great. It was like before you could make money on YouTube, it was just like fun. And then you start making money and then it's like, where do you find your niche? Like I said, I never felt like I had like talent. So I was like, what can I do? Oh, I can like piss people off. I can do this. So I definitely went like the trolling route because it was like the most money I ever made without having to like strip or hook. And I was just like, this is it, you know? So yeah, I definitely had a lot of like problematic videos and just stuff that like I ne didn't necessarily even think. I think if I was like me, I could like hold stronger to like, oh, I was just like young or whatever. But it was just like stuff I'd hear other people say that were like, and I would just like repeat it. I just wanted to be shocking and um, you know, and I like I totally own up to it and I look back at my videos and I'm like, well, you know, some of them are pretty bad, but I try to give myself grace and forgiveness with that because I used to be really hard on myself. I'm like, I know I suck. I'm problematic. And to this day, like I don't get sponsors on my podcast, like shout out to our Patreon, like our Patreons do it. And so, so it's, you know, it's great. But um, yeah, I definitely forever have like this like mark on me on the Internet of like kind of like mm, she's a little controversial or I wonder if it's difficult because Trisha does it? I know she's struggling. So look, again, I don't want to moralize this. I don't want to attack Trisha. I'm really rooting for Trisha. But something that stood out to me about her Leo Skeppy podcast, and you know how much I dislike Leo Skeppy, um, even though he's young and on a journey and his consciousness is really going through it. Trisha has troubles and she doesn't seem to problem solve them very well. And I'm concerned about that cope. But at the same time, like I'm not her mother. She's a grown woman. She can do what she wants. You know, she knows, you know, I trust her to figure out her life but one thing that I never hear from Trisha that I'm really rooting for and waiting for is like who are you because Trisha is very similar she it's very hard to box Trisha she's very differently talented and interesting and she's a nerd theater kid in a way she's very like unique in her own sense she's obviously in my opinion probably neurodivergent and I think everyone's neurodivergent so don't take that too seriously but I feel like if you're on the internet being this weird what's going on because normal people don't get on the internet. I'm sorry. Too busy doing their own lives. I'm sorry. There's something really different about a person who decides to be a content creator. And it usually stems from large dysfunction, which she had growing up, or a relationship with yourself. She's borderline, which is neurodivergency, right? So she has like her variations of uniqueness to her. But I don't know who she is in terms of values. Like what are Trisha's real values like you know when you watch me you might feel judged by me because I'm so like rigid about my sense of justice well where's Trisha's sense of justice because there are things I have had opportunity after opportunity to do that I could not bring myself to do but I know Trisha's done them I know other people have done them I know other people were more than happy to do them I just never could because I'm like oh I, I can't do that I'm so sorry they're like we'll pay you and I was like I, I, I can't do it I can't I can't let myself I, I will do enough things to embarrass myself. There's so many things I've done in my past that are so embarrassing, but I have to do them because I believe in them or I think it's the right thing to do. Not because you not because of opportunity. I don't I can't do it. And I wonder, like, what is that? Mine, obviously, I grew up with a very strong family value system. I grew up super, super religious and my rebellion was very specific. So I know for the fact growing up religious probably kept me from doing a lot of things that a lot of people were willing to do. In my opinion, I really think that's the reason. But I don't know. You know what I mean? So I'm curious. Ingrid says, I don't think everyone is neurodivergent. Obviously, I don't literally believe that as well. I'm just being like Brittany. I'm being hyperbolic. Like I just say that all the time because that's the joke. But like I don't actually think that. That would be outrageous that on a planet of 8 billion people, all of them would be neurodivergent. So don't take my like – Take me as like great as a joke, but also it's like a joke that I think everyone's neurodivergent. Okay. You know, you just, people don't want you like around, but you know, it's, it's fine. Like again, I, my word of wise to people when I see people trolling now on the internet is like, just maybe don't because it'll like follow you forever. People will think of you as that forever. I mean, even if you're not trolling, it will follow you forever. Right. Emily says, I haven't heard of Leo before Trisha's pod with him. What's your take on him? Watch my takes. I have two videos on Leo Skeppy. 
watch both of them or just watch my most recent one where I review Trisha hanging out with him, you'll get my whole, you'll get the whole thing. And rightfully so. Like, you know, like those clips will always be out there and people either see the change in the growth or they don't. And I think either one you just have to like yeah. work with, you know. But I do think it's helpful that you're like explaining your backstory. And that's why I wanted to talk to you about yeah. it today because it's like. Ribbit says, I wish I could remember what podcast or when she said it, but I'm pretty sure Trisha specifically said once she doesn't know and inherits uh she inherit she inherits personalities from who she's interacting with very borderline right even my mom would say oh Brittany, you like hang out with someone you come home talking like them i know i'm trying to figure out my identity so i even do that now and i can always tell like who i've been watching lately or like my partner recently he's like why do you keep making the same joke over and over again i was like i don't know and I must have heard it from somebody because like I do that. My brain gets latched on to like a specific way someone talks and I think it's interesting or funny and I will mimic them forever until I lose it again. And so it looks like I'm taking over their personality, but I'm just like finding interest in like, oh, I think that's funny. But I know my base personality, like my actual personality, it took me a long time to figure it out. So that's very borderline, which is so relatable, right? Same. For sure. I bet I'll get comments being like, why the fuck are you having Trisha Paytas yeah. on? Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. I totally understand that. I also, though, think it's important. Like, the fact that you just said, like, I could make more money doing this than stripping and mm. hooking. It's like, okay, like, it's good to know someone's backstory. And I think when, again, when you're saying those type of things, usually the people that are saying those things, you're not in a great place. Never. Oh, my gosh. Right? Oh, mm. back then, I just... Couldn't, I didn't care about me. My, I didn't think anything of the future. I was just yeah. like, I need to make money now. I'm just going to piss people off. I don't care. I don't have mm. friends for a reason. Right. Never thinking like it would be a full career or anything. Yeah. What did I tell you about levels of dysfunction? If you are dysfunctional enough growing up, you can and you have the right personality, you can turn it into a multi-million dollar business. Like David Goggins, like Trisha Paytas, right? I really believe that. If you're mid-dysfunctional like me, you can turn it into a great life. If you overcome it, you have a great story and you have a lot of stability and good family, friends, and community. So I have like a great family, friend, community. I'm a good middle-class YouTuber. I make a good living. Like everything's really great, but I'm never gonna be a celebrity type because I don't think I was dysfunctional enough growing up to say yes to every opportunity that came to me. I have a family. And actually, you know, some anecdotal like experiences show that having a family keeps you less likely to do very radical things. Even my OF and even my experience with sex positivity comes from a nudist philosophy. It comes from my desire to be sex positive and see the body as neutral um, in context. So that doesn't even come from my rebellion. I'm not even doing it because I'm rebelling. But some of these women out here are so dysfunctional with their family and friends. They're willing to do things on camera because they don't have a reason not to. And even I thought to myself, oh, I wish I was dysfunctional enough to do that so I could make those millions of dollars, but I'm not. And I know that sounds crazy, but there's something really unique there. Now, that's not to say everyone who does extreme things on camera comes from a level of dysfunction. But there is a specific category of people where that's really true for them, where they have no friends, they have no family, they have no reason to say no, they just want money. But because I always had friends and family and an establishment and a value system, though rocky until, you know, my basically almost 30, it w kept me from doing things that I wasn't a fully comfortable with for the most part. I don't give into peer pressure much. It takes a lot for me to do things I don't want to do. I'm also very stubborn in that way. Um, and so there's something to that that I think is real. And then if you have basically little to no dysfunction, even though I think everyone has dysfunction on a spectrum, you're probably more likely to be a pretty well-adjusted and successful person within society in the bubble you're born into. So it's interesting, the certain level of dysfunction you end up in can, and your personality correlates with it, could absolutely get you into something like fame. Um, uh, what's her name did the same thing. What's that other, what's the other corn star? The one who was like number one for a long time. We just reviewed her. She is borderline. She's doing great and we love her. She had the same thing, completely disassociated from her family, completely without obligation to them, went full force into something she didn't even like to do because the money was worth it. You know what I mean? There's something about it, you know? JJ says, I want to be nude rebelliously, but I'm not that type of dysfunctional. Like I wish I could care about making money more than being stable. I know. Relatable. I so wouldn't want to be the famous type. Too many opportunities for rejection and having to act a certain way. True. Emmy says, I did so much garbage in my teens and 20s. If I didn't have a family to judge me, I can't imagine. I know. I know. That's why that conversation around free will comes up. What is free will? 
and what is what is what well what is not free will like do, do we even have the choice i don't know something in me because of where i was raised and how i was brought up and everything just it forced me in a certain journey you know and this forced uh, trisha and her journey every everything contributes to how we end up making decisions in our lives you know everything we take everything into consideration you know for me the money was never worth it but for trisha like she's saying it was worth it it was worth it for her yeah. Well, that's what I also think sometimes like people feel like they're lucky because they can make fake accounts but like god forbid one day all of your fake account comments and trolling and you like telling people to go kill themselves or whatever like oh there are god. people on the internet that are so ruthless but they don't have the balls to do it publicly yeah. and have their own name on it if that god forbid you walked into work one day and all of your comments were placed on your own desk oh like gosh. would you be fired or not and I think it like if you look inward all of those people are not in a good place and clearly oh, no. you weren't either yeah and you've kind of had this like redemption arc but like when you look back do you think you were addicted to the drama once you started oh. to see the money oh you guys i'm so sorry you guys are saying tana fits the mold of dysfunction yes oh my god i'm losing track of the conversation yes tana Mo mojo tana 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 is a great example of like right level of dysfunction leading to the right level of success which is amazing like it's pretty it's pretty fucking good so yes that's a great example great example oh yeah i mm -hmm. mean for so long like a good like 10 12 years i was so addicted i was just so miserable so like mm -hmm. any attention was good attention money was just money you know what i mean so it just yeah it's it is crazy but i did mm -hmm. reap the karmatic you know effects of it all so it does like you said even the trolls i think it i think it's so real i think karma mm -hmm. is so real and like i've reaped all of that <sighs> Okay, just a reminder that karma is not you do good, you get good. Karma is your life reflected back to you. So karma isn't I'll do a good thing so I deserve a good thing. Karma is your life is your making. Karma is you. You are so powerful. Karma is you put into your life what is reflected back to you. Trisha is saying that in, in essence, but I want to make it clear. Trisha's life was what she put into it and that's what she gets back. Not that she did good and she got bad or bad, did bad and got bad or did, it's just that this is, she did this to herself. And that's what karma is, a realization that we put into our lives, what is reflected back to us. So, you know, I'm like looking at my life and I look at it and I go, oh, my gosh, my life is so good right now. Well, yeah, girl, you did all that. You did all that work. You made the right decisions and made the right connections and did all these right things like you. You have this great thing you this is your life you put it in you get it back then there's the karma for like your whole family and the karma for like your whole lineage and then the karma for your own and that's what your ancestors put into it and what gets back to you hopefully i have my ways to make money but yeah you just you, you reap it for a long time so totally. <laughs> why do you think though second chances are so important because i think people do like change i think majority of humans evolve as human beings especially when you get older when you find happiness, when you find love, like you I mean people do change. And I think like that's the whole point of humanity, right? Is like the evolution of it all. Like I think our society shows that like, you know, from like us in like the 60s, you know, with like segregation. stuff. So, you know, I think it's like just shown like obviously people are cha like change. Yeah. So I think that's important. Otherwise, you never like never can grow and never can mm. like, you know, um, but yeah, I've had second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth chances. So I appreciate. Okay, I'm glad she mentioned that because she really has had a lot of chances of all of them yeah. some people don't deserve them some people don't want to give them to you but i do think it's important to like try to see people changing yeah i think i really think people do and can i agree i think also it's really difficult on the internet when you have a persona that i even feel it sometimes like i mm -hmm. feel like sometimes i've met people and they're like oh my gosh like i thought you were going to be such a bitch you're going to be this and i'm like oh yeah. like I mean, I don't know. You can be honest, like what you yeah. thought of before you met me. Yeah, because you just hear all the stuff, right? You hear all yeah. the drama. And so yeah. you're just like, wow, she's a ruthless. She's this. And you know, not yeah. to say I don't judge because obviously I know, like I know how people take things. But of you hear those things or just how, I don't know, you think someone's just going to be arrogant or whatever because totally. you have all this like money and you're skinny and you're pretty. So you're like, well, you just know, you know, I think you have the assumptions. Again, at this age, I don't. I'm just like, and I was, I was surprised the energy you have is just so different than like people would think. You. you know what I mean? No, I, I appreciate you saying that because I I think that's the point is like we see people online and most of the time we never get to meet these people in person so like uh, yeah. there's a image online that people will like assume of you and it's do we like her set it's very interesting like it's a very interesting set it's kind of like 
old Chanel, but also a little, she looks too y old, young for it, but also kind of works. Do we like this set? I can't help but notice, like, it has the weirdest, like, the side tables are kind of weird. Is this, like, a temporary set? This doesn't feel like a, she's, she's, like, the number one girl podcast. I feel like her set should look better, I feel. It looks dusty. It looks dusty. I'm going to say it like that. It looks a little dusty. Really fucking hard. But she seems very nice. Hard to break away yeah. from that. And so obviously, like, I know my, my, the way that I got through it was like, I know the truth and I know what happened and I know I feel like I can go to sleep and I'm a good person and I have good people around me and like, and if I'm good with my life off the internet, I think then I did become a better version of myself on the internet because it's like when all you are looking for is valid. Like, what is this? Like, what is this lockbox in the back? It's just so weird and random. It's like, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. Like, why is it there? I'm sorry. I'm just like, I'm not understanding. Discord said the set makes me think of a lobby at a spa. Yeah, it looks like a lobby. It looks like a hotel lobby, bro validation from the internet which it yeah. seems like at one point that was you didn't have friends you were really in a dark place like you're gonna just say some crazy oh, fucking shit sure. yeah. and you don't give mm -hmm. a fuck yeah but I do think second chances you're right are important because like I'm so proud of the growth that I've had and I know you feel the same way about yourself of like oh Mariah says it doesn't feel reflective of the podcast do you watch it what is what is the podcast about I wonder if I should give it a chance Again, she just feels like too straight and white for me, but and that's not just I don't mean that in the way that it sounds. But I mean like, you know, I'm very like we all just reviewed earlier. I'm a very like queer neurodivergent like weird girl, so like I I feel like I'm not going to like what's the connection here? But obviously, maybe I should give it a chance. Maybe I'm being an at. Maybe I should give it a chance. Of course we've changed. Yeah. And of course now like when you have things you care about, everything is put in perspective oh my god so different right? now it's like oh i don't want to embarrass my husband i don't want to embarrass my daughter you know you're like yeah. so it changes everything about you yeah. that's what i knew like i had to change all of it Ooh, i don't want to embarrass the people in my life versus i don't want to move against my values i don't really think about embarrassing people so when i think about what i'm doing i think is it within my values i don't really think is it embarrassing to other people i just think like is it within my am i willing to live with myself if i do this like everything I've done for OF, everything I've done in terms of like nude, like parades or walking or I don't know, anything I've done, I'm pretty okay with. Like if you want to post it, I can tell you where I was and why I thought it was great and why I thought I did it and why, you know, I even thought I hated that I did it or whatever. But I don't do it because of embarrassing other people. You know, I think I'm so strongly aligned with like, again, I associate it with my values. Hmm, I don't know. Uh, Discord says, I thought I heard that this interview, they're in a content house. I could be misremembering. Okay, so maybe this is like a temporary house or something. Yeah, maybe this is a temporary house. Interesting. And yeah. it just, and I, I really do feel it. And I'm like, people can see it or they don't see it. I don't care because I, I feel better. But it does feel, especially right now, that people have like seen it. And it's not me saying, I've changed this. You know, it just took time, you know, I think with anything. Like just public feuds, anything, you know, people always you know, there's always sides that people pick without knowing the full truth. And it's just like getting through that. And it doesn't really matter at the end of the day what people think, you know, about it. It's like totally. mm. some people are going to think I'm this person, something, whatever. It's but, okay. Yeah. Right. As long as you know who you are. Yeah. yeah. I've been kidnapped a bunch of times where it's just like you wake up in like a truck and the truck's moving and stuff like Wait, that. Yeah. Trisha? Yeah. Pause? <laughs> Sorry, what? Yeah, I got kidnapped. Well, I guess, I don't know if it's kidnapping if you're over 18, but I was 19. I've been abducted, I guess. <laughs> it's kidnapping no matter if you're 45 <laughs> Wait, or really? 50. Yes. I could be kidnapped at 35 yes oh, okay we we yeah i was yeah can you walk me but it's like it's in the sense where it's like i don't know where i'm at like i go with somebody and all of a sudden you wake up you're like oh in someone's truck and stuff like that at one point in your life you woke up in the back of a truck i mean multiple times yeah yeah it's crazy and you know, back then again you don't think in there but you're like well i went with this person willingly yeah you just don't think about stuff like that i've been kidnapped a bunch of times where it's just kidnapped over 40 times trisha what do you mean okay so there's like this like commenter Right? Like, what does that mean? Kidnapped a bunch of times? Is she telling the truth? Well, that's my question. So is this Trisha being a troll again? Or is she seriously making the claim she's been kidnapped many times? You know what I mean? She said she had been kidnapped in Mexico at gunpoint. She was really just on vacation with her mom at a resort. She's just getting away with all these lies again. Well, that's what I'm asking. I'm asking, is she saying that it's true? She got kidnapped multiple times? Like, aren't we past? I thought this was all part of her troll past. Or she's saying 
she just said that, like don't troll it will follow you but now she's saying I've been kidnapped or is she saying like I got drunk a lot and I would end up in the back of people's cars because like or like are like what are we saying and then they use this for their clip for so Spotify podcasts use this for their clip and I'm like well what does this mean like you know what I mean and so now I guess I could go watch the podcast I just don't want to watch it on my stream and get in trouble by YouTube hey guys future Brittany here so I went and listened on Spotify which is a paid service I'm part of premium to make sure that I understood the context of this clip basically Trisha feels like she was kidnapped I think it's a little irresponsible for her to put that out there and for Spotify to highlight this particular moment because she wasn't literally kidnapped but as you see in my video moving forward, the chat and I have a discussion about it. And from people's perspectives, they could see how it could feel like kidnapping or even be kidnapping. So I hope you enjoy the rest of this video as we have a discussion around it. Colleen says she was being serious, but may have been exaggerating. Britt says she admits to abusing drugs. She has likely been blackout and not realizing the situation she gets into. I guess like that's the thing. I can't tell. And I guess like, look, David Goggins said it yesterday, which I thought was pretty funny, where he said, you know, I was a liar my whole life and I thought I was the only one. But then I realized everybody lies. And I'm like, oh, my God. And then when you stop being a liar, you really recognize how much li people lie and it's true like I always thought like no way people lie as much as like I have lied to myself or lied about myself and then when I stopped lying and I practiced like trying not to lie and I know everyone defines lying differently but when I actively stopped lying I was like oh my god does everybody lie just tell me the truth bro I'm not gonna judge you but then I realized like people really feel judged and I get it like I do get it because lying is very human I'm not gonna like condemn you for not being able to like say the truth or face the truth. I just want to know like can she literally mean she was kidnapped multiple times up to 40? Like is that a thing? Like is that a thing? You know what I mean? Like is that is that a story that I can even believe? Like I can't even believe it. I'm like that's just like prob the probability of that is so unlikely. So I'm not sure. This is hard though because here we are talking about second, third, fourth, fifth chances. Here we are having conversations about not trolling. But then I don't want to doubt her story because like, what if it's true? You know, what if it's true? Rock says, I think she's just not the smartest person. I mean, she said in the same breath, I don't know if you can be kidnapped if you're not a kid. She may have a different understanding of the what kidnap means, which is one of the, yes, that could possibly be it. Maybe she's not like understanding. You know what I mean? Maybe that's not, that doesn't make sense. You know, maybe she just doesn't understand what she's saying. Emily says, and she doesn't seem like she has folks around her who have her best interest in mind. It's hard to say. I never know if Moses is on her side or not. Rock says and then specified she meant waking up in a vehicle and not knowing where she was. Well, that's the thing. If you're just waking up in a vehicle and you don't know where you are and if you're just being thrown into the back of a truck because your friends don't know what to do with you or people don't know what to do with you, you're not being kidnapped. You're just being put somewhere while you're drunk. You know what I mean? Is she lying or is she delusional? Or maybe maybe it is just a misunderstanding of words. Discord says, I think she meant she got drunk and ended up in people's cars and forgot how she got there, to be honest, which definitely is not kidnapping, right? We all agree to that. Like, we definitely agree that's not kidnapping. Tara says, could, could, it, could it be, quote, felt kidnapped and using kidnapped as a feeling? Maybe. Discord says, and if she was a full service sex worker at some point, that doesn't seem like a crazy scenario. I think think it kind of does in the timeline she was even a sex worker right because like I don't even know if she really did sex work more than like a couple of customers once in a while like let's be real I don't know if Trisha's sex work hooking was ever really at the same level as like survival sex workers traditionally so I don't know about Trisha's background enough to know if that's true because not everyone's doing it in the same levels of harm right not everyone's in the worst scenario ever so I don't know. Like, I never knew, like, because her stories were so mixed in with so many lies. I never knew if she only had, like, if she ever did it, if she only had one client, if it was, like, one time, if it was really, if any of those things underage ever happened. I am not sure what part of Trisha's life is even real. So I never know. And I don't want to accuse her of lying. But because she spent so much time lying, it's hard to know which part is true or not. Discord says she's probably using hyperbolic language and doesn't mean the legal term of kidnapping. Or Discord also says to me, it's just how Trisha is using language. I don't think she's trolling. Yeah, I could definitely see it being authentic, but not the words in the same way. Look, I even get accused of using words differently than normal people. So maybe it's just that. Maybe she's just using words differently. <laughs> Discord said as a full service sex worker, this is absolutely a crazy scenario. Maybe not for workers with pimps and who work on the street. Yeah, so that's the other thing. But for an escort, yes. Yeah, like getting kidnapped over and over again, it depends. Like, I don't, just like, that's a really weird 
That's the improbability of it is so strange. Or not literally being kidnapped. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what she's saying. Like, I don't know what she's saying. Britt says, I think she's ta been taken uh, to a lot of places against her will. Maybe she defines that a kidnapping. Ooh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. What does her uh, substance abuse have to do with this, guys? Everyone keeps typing in chat like, but she's open with drugs. She's open about drugs. What does that have to do with anything? Am I confusing? What does the kidnapping have to do with the drug abuse? Wait, what am I missing? You guys obviously are seeing something I'm not seeing. What is it? Britt says if you're partying and around weird people, that can easily happen or weird boyfriends or men you're seeing. Maybe. Okay, okay. So you're saying imagine a drug scenario, lots of drugs. She's, you know, they throw her into the car. So it's not like kidnapping, but it's more like she doesn't know where she is. She's waking up unsure. The drugs are impacting her. Okay. I could definitely see that. Okay, okay, okay. I get it. I get it. So if you're out of it, Britt says, if you're using drugs and willing to do shitty things that sober you, you would never dream of. Okay, I get it now. Okay, so best case scenario, she's talking about a time in her life in which she would wake up without even knowing where she was because of the lifestyle she was in and because it was so shitty, it felt like kidnapping. So yeah, Discord says the drug use has to do with ending up in places you don't know how you got there. Okay, my brain, I mean, I've done that a few times. Don't like it, but my 20s were fun. Um, I never abused drugs, but I was drinking with my friends. Obviously, we're going to gay bars every night. Um, not literally, but like we were going to gay bars every weekend. And yeah, you would like wake up and you don't know how you got there, but you knew you got there because your friends put you there. So I've only had those situations, which obviously are not kidnapping. Your friends put you there because they were trying to, you know, you have people who like watch out for you. So obviously that's different, but she's talking about something that felt like more kidnappy, which is interesting. What a different experience. Okay. I could see that. Okay. So not kidnapping, but like, and not fun partying, like in my twenties, not like good partying where, yeah, you don't know where you are, but your friends will get you. You'll be fine. <laughs> or even if you wake up like on the sidewalk, you'll be fine. You know what I mean? So like that's different because I like I'm middle class party. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm a, I was a middle class partier, you know, nice bars, pub crawls, waking up in other people's beds. And you're just like, what's up, bro? And you're like, what's up? People like being cool about it. So that's different. It sounds like Trisha had the more dysfunctional going back to our spectrum of dysfunction, dysfunctional, negative relationship with drugs or maybe waking up where she didn't know where she was. Da, 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 da. 